What is gold standard TRT? Essentially, it means using the most effective method of achieving your desired outcome, which is stability and optimized levels. What do we do at the Men's Health Clinic? We utilize either testosterone sipinate or testosterone enanthate alongside HCG as our gold standard. Why? Because it makes sense. Uh, it makes sense when you have an understanding of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, and it makes sense from our clinical experience. When we open the clinic, um, we utilised Nibido because it was the UK licensed drug for testosterone replacement therapy and the gel. So we prescribed it as per the manufacturing guidelines. So stat dose, four mil, six weeks later a booster and then check levels after 12 weeks and then adjust the dose accordingly. Unfortunately, at that 12 week moment, the levels were almost always close, if not the same, as pre-treatment levels, peaks and troughs. So, after a while, we decided to use an anthate because um, we did look to the American model and we thought, okay, we're a progressive team. Let's look to the short tracting esters in achieving stability. Uh, because it, little, it made more sense. So again, as per the manufacturing guidelines, we used 250 mil milligrams, not mil, but yeah, that'd be a lot, um, every two to three weeks, peaks and troughs. So through clinical experience, and then looking at the American model of microdosing, we thought, hmm, there's something in this. There is something in this. So yeah, we started microdosing, but... When we say microdosing, we meant every three and a half days because that was the standard protocol injection frequency used in the States. We had much more effective control, much more stable levels, and patient satisfaction was good. So why did we change to every other day? Because that's crazy. How, who wants to inject every other day? Well, nobody wants to inject every other day, but when you realize you can achieve stability, and I mean true stability, in the vast majority of patients with every other day injections, people don't mind. So we're not talking about just stable numbers, we're actually f talking about the qualitative benefits of having stable numbers and optimized melandrin levels. So it wasn't simply a matter of the free testosterone, it's actually estrogen was the big player. So it's quite easy to control free testosterone. It's just dose adjustment. Um, but estrogen, it certainly appears the more frequent injections you have, the more stable your estrogen levels are. That doesn't negate the fact that you can still have a propensity to aromatization. Um, so it was the most effective method of achieving stable levels every other day injections. So most of my guys now on, are on every other day injections. Some are on daily injections. Is it a pain? Well, it's a little bit of a pain. It's a prick. Um, but it's a risk benefit thing. As with everything, there's a risk benefit analysis and it's a discussion that you have with your patient. And we fully counsel our guys and nobody says, oh, it's too much, it's too much, because they actually feel the qualitative benefits of having stable levels. So they are more than willing to inject every other day and sometimes daily to achieve stable levels and achieve their desired outcome. Crazy. Not really, because the old school was injecting deep IM with a blue needle. A harpoon. A harpoon. I was quite resistant to changing to shallow AM. I don't know why. Just sort of um, from a his historical perspective, I thought, okay, 
deep IM glute was the, was the way to go. But we changed to shallow IM with 21, 27 gauge fixed needle syringes. Um, and we have lots of positive reports. But then you kind of, kind of consider, okay, some of these guys are in their 30s, 40s. Oh, that's 40 years of injecting IM. Irrespective of it not being deep, shallow IM, there is that potential for scar tissue. So we looked at subcutaneous injections because there was not only the issue of decreased pain injecting into, into the subcutaneous tissue, there was also, again, estrogen. Decreased aromatization from injecting subcutaneously. Why? Well, you inject the oil and it has to get into the systemic circulation. So you've got fat, you've got fibrous tissue, collagen, uh, and you've got the capillaries where the, where the uh, testosterone ester goes into, into the systemic circulation, and you've also got the lymphatic system, um, which eventually ends up into the systemic circulation. So there is a delay in its absorption before it goes to the liver to, to um, uh, have the carbon atoms removed or cleaved from the testosterone ester. So we have found that estrogen has been decreased through subcutaneous injections. Wonderful news, absolutely wonderful news. So the practice has evolved and it's evolved into frequent small doses. And my preferred method is subcutaneous injections. We do use intramuscular for some guys still. Um, and it's normally the chunky monkeys because sometimes you can have a delay in absorption with the subcutaneous route and uh, what we're working towards is getting these guys optimized and then getting them to lose the weight and then switching them over to subcutaneous injections because again 40 years 40 50 years you know you don't necessarily want to be injecting intramuscularly when you don't have to we're always looking out for the best interest of the patient so testosterone enanthate subcutaneously was well tolerated by a lot of guys but we did have issues with some guys why did we have issues well, we had issues because the carrier oil in enanthate is sesame oil it's really quite viscous it's gloopy and uh, the preservative in testosterone enanthate is chlorobutanol it's actually at a concentration that we know is irritative it's five percent um but Enanthate was well tolerated by a lot of guys, but some complained of post-injection pain, uh, lumps, bumps. Um, so it's not an ideal option for subcutaneous injections. And it was the absorption. The absorption seemed to be an issue. So we looked to testosterone cypionate. Uh, why? Because it's number one, it's the preferred choice of ester in the United States. Um, there's lots of research behind it. Uh, it is very fluid. In the United States, it's cotton seed oil. Uh, over here in the United Kingdom and your, or Europe, it's olive oil. So one could say testosterone cypionate is heart healthy. One could say that, really. Not really. Um, but it's very fluid. So when you're injecting into the subcutaneous tissue, uh, it's more likely to dissipate and uh, get absorbed into the capillaries of the lymphatic system. What else? Well, instead of chlorobutanol, it has benzoyl alcohol. And it's got a very small component or percentage of benzoyl alcohol. Um, you Sustanon users will know benzoyl alcohol because that's what causes most of your post-injection pain. But the concentration of benzoyl alcohol in testosterone cypionate is far less. So... It gets absorbed easier and it's less irritative. And I'm pleased to report we have ver had very positive reports about the injecting procedure and uh, we are thrilled. So when making a choice about which testosterone ester to use, here at the Men's Health Clinic, you have the option of testosterone enanthate and testosterone cypionate. So we have a risk-benefit discussion with everybody. 
and you make your choice. As I said, we always have HCG alongside testosterone. I don't believe it's what's what's the um, what's the Latin phrase? Premium non something. I can't remember. I'm too tired. Um, so yeah, gold standard care is using a single ester, not a blend, um, and HCG alongside it. That is hormone optimization. No transcrotal testosterone creams here. Um, we do worry about SHBG. We do worry about estrogen because we control estrogen. There have been no documentary studies that estrogen is dangerous. Yeah, there have actually. Um, have a look at the Facebook page. Cancer. Yeah, it's quite important. That's quite, that's quite, that's quite a consequence. Um, you've only got to ask the guys how they feel with excess estrogen. So to say you don't have to worry about estrogen is, is a little bit special. Um, but, you know, each to their own. But I, I really couldn't care less what you think. Um, you know who I'm talking to. So, yeah, you're, you're, you're nothing. Um, so estrogen, yeah, we do care about estrogen. Because high estrogen causes anxiety. High estrogen causes a decrease in your libido. Uh, high estrogen causes water retention. High estrogen causes bloating. High estrogen causes breast tissue swelling. You don't have to worry about estrogen. You do have to worry about estrogen. So we control estrogen. Uh, you don't have to worry about SHBG. So these guys using the transcriptal testosterone cream with their huge numbers. And they feel amazing. I feel amazing. Um, yeah, I'm glad you feel amazing. But if you look at the purpose behind testosterone replacement therapy... Normalization, stroke optimization, they should be the same thing. Not super physiological levels, but there's been no long term data. Well, there is no long term data, or there's, there's, there's long term data to suggest that, DH, that having an elevated DHT is not dangerous. Two year studies is nothing. Um, let's think about basic biology, let's think about homeostasis, let's talk about balance. You know, you can quote all the whatever's you quote, but you know, it's nonsensical. You're, you're, your pseudo-intellectualism is embarrassing. But I feel great! I feel great! Okay, good. Uh, you're high. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see in five, ten years. Um, SHBG. You don't have to worry about SHBG. Of course you do. It's there for a reason. It's produced by the liver to bind to testosterone. If you didn't need it, you wouldn't have it. So, honestly, guys, you know, the, so the half-life of testosterone is really short. So when you produce testosterone in the testicles, it needs to bind, a proportion of it needs to bind to SHBG. And SHBG helps transfer it within the cell and it helps expression of testosterone within the cell. Why? Growth and repair. Growth and repair, the primary purpose behind testosterone replacement therapy. Not, oh, I feel great, I feel great, I've never felt better. Because you need to have a basic understanding of the premise, purpose behind testosterone. And it isn't, I feel great. It's actually growth and repair. The free testosterone components, 1-2%, to and then supplement estrogen, DHT. So you guys banging in loads, chasing high numbers, you're doing more harm to the cause of testosterone replacement therapy. We're trying to legitimize the condition and you guys who are all jacked up, you're not doing us any, any, any favors. Um, we want to improve access uh, and you're not helping us. So there are lots of guys out there who are suffering because of the association of testosterone replacement therapy and anabolic steroids. And you guys are continuing that association. Sorry, but you are. So here at the Men's Health Clinic, we work with nature, not against it. We are trying to achieve balance, optimization to help facilitate homeostasis. So good luck to you guys, but we're gonna to continue to do it correctly. Bye-bye.